Hey everyone, Happy New Year. Welcome to the third part in our three-part series of business planning for 2022. In our first part series, we discussed our why, vision board, and core values. And uh, part two, we discussed daily schedule. And then our top five um, habits that we need to get into every day for success in real estate. So wanted to hit on our part three series. Um, the part three series is called mapping out your money path. So it's really important when we're obviously planning our business to understand our finances, our income, our expenses, um, how we're going to get to where we're going and the path um, that's going to lead us there. So if you need anything regarding business planning, uh, we have a full business plan. I'd be happy to send over to anyone who needs it and discuss it with you if you need some time to really dive into it. Um, a business plan that we have really gets into everything that we're going to discuss in this video in a lot more depth from a mathematical standpoint to really break everything down. Um, so I'm just going to get into the topics that we cover. If you want to get further into it, let me know, reach out. I'd be happy to help with that. So here we go. The first thing that you want to really understand uh, might seem obvious to a lot of people, but is your expenses for your house. Uh, I'm sure a lot of us know our expenses, some better than others, uh, but you really want to get a good grasp on your expenses. If you're not seeing where your money's going every month, um, you know, that can be a problem. There's probably a lot of wasted money um, with just a little bit of, uh, you know, observing what you're doing every month by tracking, you're going to be able to save some money. Um, so make sure that you're looking at your expenses, everything from your mortgage to your bills, your groceries, your kids, um, extracurriculars. Everything that you're spending money on, we want to break it all down. We want to get a bottom line number for our expenses every month uh, for our personal household. All right. That's the first thing we want to do. The second thing that we need to do when we're, we're looking at our income and how much we want to make is we want to make sure that we're factoring in Uncle Sam or the IRS. Uh, I see a lot of agents that don't pay in to quarterly taxes. I'm not an accountant, but uh, check with your accountant. You should be paying in quarterly. Uh, set aside money from every paycheck make that quarterly payment. All right. So make sure that you're factoring that into your um, your plan as well, because that's a big chunk of, of your income. And then your last uh, source that I want to go over is your broker or your team fees that you have or both. They kind of go hand in hand sometimes together. So expenses. All right. Personal. Um, your IRS and then your broker or your team fees. All those things are expenses in your business that you want to put that are going to come off of your top line here. And we get into that a little more detail in the business plan that we can actually do some math and some examples um, if you want to reach out and get that from me. So um, the second thing that we want to figure out is what is our GCI going to be? What do we need for our GCI? So th those that aren't familiar with GCI, um, it's gross commissionable income. Basically, it's the amount of money you're bringing into your brokerage. So Quick example, if you have a $200,000 purchase price um, that you're getting a commission of 2.5% on, you're going to bring in $5,000 into your brokerage in GCI. Now that gets broken up you know, with your broker fee or your team fee or um, however your commission splits are, but the money coming in is that $5,000. So you need to know what your GCI is. And then once you figure out what you need to do for a GCI, you can break down the amount of sales volume you're going to need to do um, with your JC, GCI. And then when you get your sales volume, then you can break down the amount of units that you need to do in total, which goes into buyer and seller units. Okay. So once we figure out, hey, I want to do, let's say, six million in volume, that's going to mean I need to do, say, 25 units. I'm just making up some numbers. Okay. This is all drawn out in our business plan for 2022 um, that we go over just math and we just scribble it all down and get it all get it all figured out. So um, it does take a little bit of calculation, but let's just I just want you thinking of 
some numbers in your head and what you should be thinking about. So when we're when we're thinking about what we need to do, we need to think, okay, I want to make this amount of money. I have this amount of expenses I need to cover. Okay. This is why I need to make this money. I got these expenses. I got uncle Sam. I got my broker and fee. What's my bottom line here that I'm going to end up with. If I make this money and then pay all these things out, here's what I get. Okay. Once you get that number, now we can, figure out what our GCI needs to be in, either the, in order to get there and what our sales volume needs to be in order to get there, okay? And when we have that, now we can break down how many units we need to do, all right? And then we can break that down into month. So if we need to do, let's say, 25 units a year, okay? Then you got to break that down into your months. Now, there's seasonality to real estate. So when you're setting your goals every month, obviously, you're going to be closing more in the summer than you are in January, okay? Um, hopefully you are closing some in January, but uh, there's a seasonality to real estate that you should kind of break down. So if you have 25, spread that 25 out accordingly over the 12 months, because it's not going to be just divided by 12 and there it is every month. Um, so let's say that we have 25, we want to do 12 buyer side and we want to do 13 seller side. All right. We want to make sure that first of all, I like to go by an 80% rule. So if I need to do 12 transactions, buy side, close 12, times that by um, the 80% rule, you're going to need to do a little more than 12 transactions. Let me, because I'm not good at math. Let's see, 12 times. 12. You'd have to do about 15, okay? So... If you want to close 12, get 15 under agreement. That's your 80% rule. It's four out of five transactions, basically, that are going to close. So I like to put in a little buffer there. Same with the sell side. 13 would be probably around 16 or so transactions. So just put that buffer in. Expect the 80% rule and that you're going to only close four out of five transactions. I think that's a good rule of thumb uh, for most people. Obviously, the more experience you get, the more deals you're going to be able to keep together. Um, and that takes time, but a general rule is good for 80%. So um, now once we know, you know, our 80% rule, we want to close 12 here, 13 over here. We got our 80% rule. So this is the amount we need to get under agreement. Now we need to back it into how many calls, how many conversations, how many appointments and how many clients we're going to get. Okay. So that's another formula, but I want you to think if I need to get 25 deals done this year. All right, let's back that up. So how many calls or or what other form of marketing that I need to do? Okay, let's just use calls and examples because we're always on the phone. So if I'm making this many calls, okay, every day, every week, every month, it's going to result in this many conversations and this many appointments and this many clients to equal this many deals. Okay, so we need to kind of back that up you're gonna to need to do obviously a lot of calls in order to get those formulas down. Again, more experience. If I make, you know, an experienced person might make 10 calls, all right, and get 10 appointments. An inexperienced person might need 200 calls to get two appointments. So you need to figure out where you are on that. And obviously over time, you're gonna get better at that as well. Um, so be thinking about that when we're, we're trying to break down how many deals we need each year based on how much sales volume we need to do and our GCI that we need to make. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. The last thing I wanna talk about here is your sources. So if we wanna do say 6 million, 7 million in sales and we need 25 units in order to do that, 25, 25 deals closed, how are we actually getting those deals? <laughs> All right, so we have our buyers, we, we mentioned 12 before, we have our sellers, we mentioned 13. If I'm going to be getting 12 buyers, where are my sources coming from? What forms of marketing am I doing in order to get those 12 uh, buyers? And how am I breaking down my activities on a daily, weekly, monthly basis in order to get them? So an example would be, let's say, internet leads. Um, if, if, I, if internet leads is one of my four sources, let's say, you should have three to four sources. Um, if you can get really good at one or two, that's ideal master those then add a third master that and then add a fourth don't try to do four things mediocre all at once try to conquer one or two things and get really good at it but let's say our internet leads is our one source all right 
we have to bring in a certain amount of leads daily, weekly, monthly, in order to make a certain amount of phone calls, talk to a certain amount of people, get a certain number of appointments, and then get a certain number of clients to close deals. So that could be my one source. All right, we need to figure out what that source is. Again, get two, three, four sources and figure out what's working for you, what you're good at. Don't quit on them too early. Make sure you're giving them a good chance. I like to spend a minimum of three months every single day on a source in order to really figure out, is this actually working? So internet leads are an example of something that, you know, take time. So a Zillow meet lead might meet you there. They might write a contract. Okay. They're, they're decent leads. Some of them, um, uh, Facebook leads are much longer along in the process, right? So there's different, um, different timeframes for different leads that you need to take into consideration either as well. Make sure that you're building a pipeline as you go. That's another conversation, another video that we'll do. So that's what you want to think about with your sources. Same with your sellers. Maybe you're calling expireds for sale by owners. Maybe it's, you know, friends, family. Um, what am I doing? What are my sources? Okay. My one, two, three, four sources. And then what are my daily, weekly, monthly activities in order to get those sources? So, all right, I want to close 13 sellers this year. And out of those 13 sellers, 10 of them are going to be my sphere of influence, my, my, my friends and family. And then three of them are going to be expireds. All right. Well, if three are expireds and 10, 10 are family and friends, we got more of a focus over here on the family and friends. What are we doing? Are we calling them quarterly? Are we Facebook messaging, getting in touch? Are we having a beer, grabbing coffees, inviting them to events, sending them values, doing CMAs for them? Um, what anything you can think of that's going to be of value. What do we have for contractors? It's the winter right now. So, you know, do they need a snowplow? Do they need some, someone to, you know, snowplow their driveway? How can we be a real estate resource for our people? That should be a main focus. Break it down. What do I have to do every day, every week, every month in order to make that happen? All right. And then in the expired side, all right, well, if I'm going after expireds and I need three this year, you know, maybe I need to be calling expireds once a week for two hours. And out of those two hours, I talk to three people, they go in my pipeline. Um, and then, you know, after a month, if I talk to three people a week, that's 12 people that I now have in my pipeline. Okay. What's the math in order to get those people you're talking to get three closed because that was our goal. Break down the activities. <clears throat> so that's your business planning for 2022. Uh, again, we have a, a really robust business plan that we do math. We break it all down, but the things I want to think about, if you're just thinking on a, a you know, a really simple level is what are my expenses, my taxes, and my broker or team fees? All right. That that's the money it's going to cost me. What do I need to make? Subtract those things out, then get what I have left over for me. All right. And then based on my goals and my sales volume on my units, my GCI that I need to make, how do I break down everything in order to do that? So what are my lead sources in order to do that? And then what are my daily activities, weekly, monthly activities in order to get those um, sources accomplished and actually get clients from the marketing plan that we've put in place? So hope that makes sense. Reach out to me if you need anything. Happy New Year, everyone. Let's crush 2022. Make it a great year for everyone. And um, keep on grinding. Have a good day.